What we're going to be doing today is looking at 8.6 uh, today. So go ahead and take out your notes and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is just a two-way frequency table. So it says create a two-way table that organizes the following information. So this one's pretty straightforward. It says I have uh, 50 males who have an A and uh, 60 females who get an A. And then 60 males that get a B, 80 females that get a B. We're just going to continue filling this out. So 100 males that get a C, 50 females that get a C, 40 males that get a D, 50 females that get a D, and finally 30 males that get an F and 20 females that get an F. So what we're going to do then is just go ahead and fill out these totals really quickly. I got 110, I have 140, uh, let's see I got 150, uh, 90, and 50. And over here, if I added these all up, I have, uh, let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and look at the, uh, let's see, the values right here. So this would be 10, 20, 25, uh, 280. And over here, this would be 100, 200, 260. And then when I add those up, I'll get 540. Okay, now it doesn't say to make a uh, relative frequency table or anything, it just said a two-way frequency table, so I'm all good on that one. Alright, next one we're going to go ahead and it says create another two-way frequency table, so we're only looking at the numbers, and this one's just trying to get our brain going by looking at these values and uh, trying to figure out kind of like a missing puzzle. So it says a survey was conducted to see if students get an allowance and if they do household chores. So do they do chores and do they get an allowance? So of the 12 students who received no allowance, so let's go to no allowance, do not get an allowance, there's 12 of them. It says five of them have no chores. So of the kids who have no allowance, there's 12 of them, five of them do not get chores, which means seven of them do. Now it says there are 17 students who do chores and receive an allowance. Do chores and get an allowance. So that would be a 17 right here. And while six students get an allowance without doing chores. So let's see, while six students get an allowance, and do not do chores. So really quickly, as a reminder, guys, these are called my joint frequencies. These are my marginal frequencies. Pretty much we're given all of these, and so now we're gonna figure out my marginal. So when I add these up, I'm gonna have 23, and then here I'm gonna add these up, so this would be 11, and this would be 24. So when I add straight across or down, I would get a total of 35 students. And that's it. Doesn't ask anything about relative frequency, or conditional relative frequency. Okay, so what we talked about uh, about two lessons ago is the correlation coefficient. Um, as a quick reminder, correlation coefficient, that's just basically our value and tells us how strong our uh, relationship, our linear relationship is. So it's a key point, it's a linear relationship. And it goes from negative one to zero to positive one, so on and so forth, okay? So, the correlation coefficient is not only a tool st statisticians use to analyze whether or not a line is a good model for the data. The, the, excuse me, they also consider the residuals, which is to look at the difference between the observed value, the data, and the predicted value, the value of the regression line. Uh, the residuals are a way of thinking about how far away the actual data is from the regression line. So let's, before we begin, it's basically saying is you're going to have data, right? You have data and it's making a pretty strong relationship and we'd make a best fit line right here. And basically it's saying how far away are these points from my line, okay? So let's go ahead and actually look at this. It says, let X represent the number of hours playing a music at a concert, and Y represents the number of people attending the show in hundreds. So you're in Mr. Johnson's music class, and it's basically telling you, if you guys perform for one hour, you will have 10, and remember it's hundreds, 10 hundreds, or 1,000. If you guys play for two hours, you're going to get 1,300. Uh, if you play for three hours, you're going to get 700. And then if you notice, the longer your show gets kind of starts to peak, four hours, four hours straight concert with Mr. Johnson and you guys, you're going to get 2,200 uh, people, and five hours, you're going to get 28, so on and so forth, okay? So hopefully that data makes sense. 
Now, if I were to graph this, so we're going to put this in Desmos later, but it already kind of pointed these values out for you. If you plug these in, here would be your line, and here would be your best fit line. Remember, you're going to have some of the values above and some of the values below. Okay? And when you put this in, when you put this into Desmos as y1 squiggly line mx1 plus b, you're going to get this equation y equals 3x plus 6. So this is the equation of the best fit line. Now a way to figure out the residuals, you're going to notice on graph 2, which we're going to come back, it's basically what is the distance away from these points? What is the vertical distance above or below? Anytime you have a, di uh, a point above the line, these are going to be positive values, and every time you have uh, the, the points below, your residual value is going to be negative, okay? We're going to go exactly what that means in a second, okay? So it explains what the equation y equals 3x in plus 6 means in terms of the context of this equation. So remember we were talking about total amount of people, total attendance, is equal to 300 people, 300 more people will join per hour, and if you guys just show up and don't decide to play, you're always going to have a crowd of a starting crowd of 600 people. You guys are that popular. Okay, so essentially what it means is you will start off with 600 people and for every hour you play an additional 300 people will play based off your best fit line. So it says the residuals are the length of the segments in the second step. So I showed you the second graph. I just made it right here. And how can you calculate the length of each one of these segments? Now there's a few ways. Obviously we can just count if this were going up by ones, but it's going up by five. So it's a little harder to see exactly where these values start. So but what we would do is you would take your best fit line. So we have these y equals 3x plus 6, and we would actually plug in our x value here. So we're going to plug in our x value. And so this would give me y equals 3 times 1 plus 6 to give me y equals, uh, what would that give me, 3 plus 6 to give me y equals 9. So that is the point on my best fit line. And what you're going to do is you're going to subtract the point value, you're going to subtract the point, minus uh, basically the line on the actual point versus the predicted point. Go ahead and actually write that. The actual point minus the predicted point. And when I mean point, I'm actually just talking about the y values, okay? So the actual was 10 and I minus 9, so I have a residual value of 1. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for this uh, negative point here so we can see this. I'll do this in red so you can see what the negative value would look like. So I'm plugging in the x value of 3, so let's go ahead and do that together. y is 3 times 3 plus 6. This gives me y equals, uh, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 6 to give me y equals 15. So this is what the predicted value is using the best fit line. My y value should be 15, but it's way below that. It's actually only 7. So we take our actual point that we have minus the predicted to get a negative 8. So this residual value would be negative 8 right here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to figure out all these together. So this is going to be my x value, and this is going to be the uh, residual value. And I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure this is the residual value, but I need to double check. Um, so let's go ahead then, and I am going to uh, help solve you. So these are just my x, y, and z problems. So, uh, excuse me, my x value. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And as we already calculated, this one was one place value above. So I'm, we're going to go ahead and fill out the rest of these. We can do it pretty quickly here. So I'm going to plug in the x value into my best fit line equation. So this would give me then just y equals 3 times 2 plus 6. So then this would give me 6 plus 6, which is 12. And we're going to take our actual, which is 13 minus 12, which is 1. Okay, we already did this one, which was negative 8. 4, I'm going to have a positive value. So y equals 3 times 4 plus 6. So this would give me 12 plus 6, which is 18. My actual was 22. I'm going to minus 18, so I have a value of 4. 
switch up colors so it's a little easier to see. Same idea, let's go ahead and plug in 5. This is going to give me 3 times 5 plus 6. 15 plus 6 is 21, and my actual was 28. Remember, the actual minus the predicted, so that would be a positive 7. And remember, if it's above the line, these are positive values, and anything below it will be negative values, okay? So one more time, let's go ahead and look at the last one. I'm going to have 3 times 6 uh, plus 6. This will give me 18 plus 6 is 24. Actual value is 19, one so when I subtract, I get negative 5. Okay, so now what I want to do is plug in the uh, graph the residuals. So I'm going to take these values right here. So let me copy and paste these on over. Oops. Okay, so let me move this up here really quickly. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and plug in these values. So this is just the residual graph, and it's basically saying anything above my residual values, anything that was above one or above zero will be above it, and anything below will be below it. So we're still just gonna go ahead and graph this like normal. But this is how it always looks like. You have zero right in the center, and you have positive values above and negative values below. So when you plug it, this is going to illustrate is how far away were these points from actually the best fit line. So this one was one above. This is, and these are just the points, like one comma one, so on and so forth. Two comma one, three comma eight, negative eight. And so when we graph these, then I have two comma one, three comma negative eight, four comma four. 5 comma 7 and 6 comma negative 5 okay so then this is my residual graph right here so one thing I want you guys to be aware of in Desmos let me go and bring that up really quickly I already have the data points so this is just what you already had if I plugged in this so I had same thing that we did last time I had y1 squiggly line mx1 plus b. Same thing you guys can see here, my r, so my correlation is somewhat strong, it's pretty strong. Um, and I have my m and my x, which was already given. And I want you to notice here, it says plot residuals. So if I plot residuals, that are these values right here. So I'm going to get rid of these points, I'm going to get rid of the best fit line. And if I look right here now, it looks very similar. Okay, so if I go ahead and just take this, I just want to illustrate this just to uh, show you guys. I can take it over to the one I just made, side by side. Oops. And I'll shrink it down so we can see it a little better. But it's the same exact graph. So in Desmos, you can also plot the residual line as well. So even if I just like overlap these right on top of each other, it won't be exactly perfect, but you guys can get the idea of it. Let me just go ahead and drag it down just a tad so we can see. Yeah, it won't match up perfectly, but it's okay. You can see them side by side that it's pretty, it's exactly the same graph. So that's how to plot the residual. So one more time, if you saw that on the Desmos, we brought that up. There's something here that just says plot. You can get rid of the points. You can get rid of the best fit line. And then right here, you're focusing on zero being the center and the points above and points below. Okay. So just so you can see how those compare right next to each other, that would be my best fit line. And this would illustrate the residual. Okay, so let's go ahead now and get back over here. Now that we know how to do that on Desmos as well. It says, now that you have constructed a residual plot, think about what the residual means and answer the following questions. So really quickly, let's just go over that really quickly. This is just illustrating if this was the uh, best fit line, uh, or I should say, um, this is the distance of how far the points are away from the best fit line. So you can see these ones were really close and then it gets a little further and further. And you can actually see that on our graphs that we made. So you can see these were really close to the best fit line and then they're not too close. This one was really far, negative eight units down, negative five units down, so on and so forth, okay? Um, so let's go ahead now and if the residual is large and negative, what does that mean? So if I have my little residual or have a residual, and it's large and negative, 
it's basically saying you have a best fit line and you know you have points over here and then you have one that's way down here so basically what it could be implying is that you have a outlier and since it's negative it would be below our best fit line okay so then the next thing what does a residual uh, what does it mean if the residual is equal to zero well if the residual is equal to zero it means that the point is exactly on the line so if I go ahead and draw my best fit line right and then if I had a point that was right here you might have other points around so I'm just drawing random points but if we're to look at this one I said what is the residual of this line since it's right on the graph it's right on my best fit line it would have a residual of zero okay if when I subtracted the actual and the predicted it's the same exact number so any number minus itself would be zero if someone told you that they estimated a line of best fit for a uh, set of data points and all the residual points were positive what would you say so basically think about this if I had my residual graph it looks something like this and all these points were relatively close but they're all above it that probably wouldn't be the best representation of a best fit line because as you can see on the left what I'm about to draw in purple if you have a best fit line you should have some of the points above and some of the points below but right here you're telling me is all the points are above and that necessarily wouldn't be a best fit line and that's what this residual plot would show so what you would want is a best fit line to have the points somewhat above and somewhat below but not like this this would not be a best fit line if the correlation coefficient for a set of, for a set of data points is equal to one what would the residual plot look like? So remember, correlation coefficient, that's our R value, just tells us how strong something is. So negative one is a negative relationship that's really strong. Uh, zero means no relationship, and positive one means a strong relationship like this. Um, and if, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw this now really quickly. If you have a residual correlation coefficient of one, that means you have a perfect linear relationship that every single point is actually on the graph, okay? So that means if I were to draw this then on a residual plot, the residual plot, let's go ahead and change color. The residual plot, since all the points are exactly on the line, when you take the actual minus the predicted, you would just have a bunch of values equaling zero. So every single point would be zero and it would look like this. Okay. Okay, statisticians. So I just want you guys to realize statisticians is the person who basically studies statistics. Uh, sometimes in statistics, there's no exactly right answer. There's sometimes probably or we predict. It's kind of like the weather. If there's a 90% chance of it raining, it doesn't mean it's going to rain. It just means the probability it's going to. So statistici statisticians use lots of data, lots of models to illustrate it, to come up with the best uh, best plan of action okay so statisticians use residual plots to see if there are any patterns in the data that are not predicted by their model what pattern can you identify in the following residual plots that might indicate that the regression line is not a good model for the data so basically we're going to look at the residual plots and we're going to figure out why it is uh, a linear model or a best fit line model is not the best model for this data okay Based on the residual plot, are there any points that may be considered outliers? For each question, the original data along with the linear regression has been displayed on the data to the left and the residual plot to the right. So what this is showing is, here's my data, uh, and this was the best fit line that they came up with. So they basically drew a scatter plot on the numerical data and then had a best fit line. And this is the corresponding residual data. So based off this, what we can say is, okay, these values started off really close to the line. Okay. But then what eventually happened is it starts getting further and further and further away. So while it might be a good indication of a linear uh, model right here, 
after about the value of four, these values get further and further and further away. So it doesn't become a good predictor after about uh, my x value of four or five. And you guys can see that here in this values over here becomes less accurate. So the greater the x values, the less accurate the data. Okay, so let's go and look at the next one. So this one, as you can see, if I were to plug these in to uh, Desmos and I were to get an R value, I'd probably have a very weak R value, like R equals like 0.3 or no, that's even too high, 0.1 or something. So you can see here that when I look at this, it makes a U-shaped graph and we can see that from this data as well. And the values start up higher and then they go lower and then they go higher again. Now we want some of the data to be above and some of the data to be below, but not so much in this pattern of making an exact U-shape. So a better representation for this data would not uh, would probably be like a parabola, so like a quadratic equation type thing, not a linear line. Remember guys, whenever we look at linear regression lines or regression lines, that is talking about linear models. So um, obviously this looks does not look like a strong linear relationship. So a uh, linear model is not the best representation for this data. All right, so let's go and look at the next one. So this one, next one looks pretty tricky to me because when you look at this, it looks pretty solid. You're like, okay, uh, I have these two lines, I have these dots, and when you look at it, it's kind of like, well, they look pretty good to me. I have some points above, I have some points below. They're all pretty close. And just by first glance, I would say, oh yeah, I think it's a strong model as well. Nothing's wrong with it. The only thing I would say is if you look at this, I have one value that's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And that right there, guys, it alternates. So is this a wavelength? Is just just a coincidence? Um, you know, would it be like a sine or a cosine be better representation of this data? We don't know, but the fact that it is alternating between positive and negative gives me question whether a linear line is the best fit model. So I'll say because positive and negative values alternate It brings up the question, is linear model the best? And just so we're clear, guys, I know all these values are in the positive, but what I was really focusing on, I meant to look, focus more on the residual plot. So this val residual value is positive, is this residual value negative, so on and so forth. So when I was saying positive and negative, I wanted to be focused on the residual plot, not the linear regression line, okay? All right, so last one. This brings up a pretty good strong model right here. And if I look at this, here's my best fit line. When I look at the residual plot, it seems like values are pretty close to it. I have them uh, pretty close, nothing too crazy and high. And it looks like it should be even a stronger model. But if we notice this point right here, this point I would consider an outlier. And because of that, so without the outlier, let me go ahead and bring this up. I think my best fit line would look something more like this. But because of this one right here, what it's actually doing now is it's bringing it up. It's bringing it, it's rotating it up. So it's not rotating it perfectly at that line, but if, it, if this were the best fit line, that negative one is bringing it up. So it's a little less uh, stronger relationship, okay? So what you can see here too then, you might say, oh, it's not the strongest relationship, but you know, it's, it could be a little bit more uh, straight down, excuse me, a, a little bit more negative relationship, I should say. Then when you look at the residual plot, you can kind of see like, oh yeah, here's this point sticking way up here and it's only that one point. Um, nothing is that far above or far below the value, okay? All right, guys, there's one more thing I want to bring up with residual plots 
And if you were to notice this, so let me go ahead and eliminate all these so we can just focus on this. Uh, if you were to look at these values, I want you to notice just one quick little pattern that might help you out in the future. So if I go ahead and bring this up, oops, let me bring this up for one second. Okay. So I want us to be notice that this right here is positive one. This right here is positive one if we're looking at the residual plot. Here this would be positive four and this would be positive seven. So right here now, if this is here, this would be negative eight, this would be negative five. If I added up all my negative values, this, this would be negative 13. If I added up all my positive uh, values of the residual plot, this would be one, two, uh, six, and six plus seven is positive 13. So when I look at this, I want you to notice that when I add these values up, that it would give me, I'm going to, when I add up the residual values above and below, it should equal zero. That's not a coincidence, okay? So one more thing, when we want to have values above and below, I'm going to bring up this value and the best fit line. So when you bring up your best fit line, what it should show is that's why you always want some numbers above and below your best fit line because so when you bring it up to the residual plot those values need to be uh, equal to zero so that's just basically a little fun fact on how uh, part of making a best fit line occurs okay well that's all i have for you guys today so if you have any questions feel free to email me or your uh, other teacher and yeah i hope you guys have a wonderful day